Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, I, I got things going. All right, everybody. Um, small showing for tonight. I'm going to uh, share my screen. Uh, it says I am recording. All right, I got to share my primary screen. Okay, share. All right. Um, coming up for uh, June tenth, we are going to have a, uh, a partial solar eclipse, and uh, it should be visible from uh, Seaside Heights, uh, New Jersey. It is um, supposed to be coming up around five twenty-seven, maybe a little bit earlier. I I picked this up out of a Stellarium and uh, why is this not moving? There we go. Um, according to uh, Earth Sky, we are in a good path to, uh, to actually uh, see the, uh, the eclipse uh, as it comes by for us. Now it is gonna look like a crescent uh, sun, which is a, a rarity for us. And um, it's been like, I think, well over 100 years before we had gotten one of those uh, visible for us like that uh, at the sunrise. And uh, a bunch of us are going to be on uh, Lafayette Avenue in Seaside Park, the uh, boardwalk. There's plenty of parking over there that's like that's right by the, uh, the sawmill and uh, it should be a, a good time. Uh, of course, if we are going to do the observing for the solar eclipse, uh, proper eye protection is required. Uh, well, we'll have some of the glasses if anybody needs them. Right. Yeah. John's got a stack of them and he handed me a stack of them just in case. So we should have plenty. And uh, I'll be trying to uh, take some pictures of it as it's coming up. Uh Another thing I'd like to mention is congrats to uh, to Ron, uh, one of our club members. He got astrophotography photo of the day for the skysearches.com on May 10th. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with that site, uh, I'll have it in the newsletter and you should be able to go back and uh, have a look at it. It's his fifth time uh, for Ron. You know, awesome job, Ron, uh, congratulations. It was a reprocessed image of the Dumbbell Nebula uh, that he originally uh, shot back in November of uh, 2020. Uh, another thing to uh, mention is that uh, we have some uh, county park presentations coming up in the uh, fall, early winter of uh, 2021 for Cloverdale, Jake's Branch, and uh, Caddis Island. Cloverdale will be on September 14th, uh, astronomy with binoculars. October 21st at Jake's Branch will be uh, light pollution. Uh, November 9th will begin beginner astronomy at Caddis Island. And then again at Caddis Island, November 16th, a uh, discussion on uh, Milky Way photography. Uh, for uh, Lucy, you know, for your mom, there may be some opportunities with these particular presentations that uh, maybe we can do something with uh, the Girl Scouts to uh, have it coincide together. So I'll need to talk to your mom on that. Hmm. And uh, lastly, uh, we'll say telescope safety, but also Milky Way photography safety. Always be aware of your surroundings. You never know, you know what can happen. Um, this is a clip from a movie, but I recently attended a uh, Milky Way photography session. And one of the things that they did talk about is like when you're going out to these sites uh, as a uh, Milky Way photographer, if you're going out there at night or even leaving a location at night, you got to be really careful about, you know, what you're doing out there. Uh, there, 
in in the session, I, I did hear some horror stories of people, you know, driving off the road or having an accident and go, going off the cliff, uh, you know, while walking because they got a little too close at night. So, again, always be uh, aware of your surroundings. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing right now at this point, you know, before we get into. Uh, the uh, the show and tells uh, for tonight. So, Ro, do you have anything? Uh, nope. For tonight. Nope. Okay. All right. Um, Sam, we got some of the uh, more of the members here. So, why why don't you mention your your possible adventures for the summer? All right. Um, it's not a hundred percent confirmed yet, but I might be doing um a NASA internship this uh, summer. Uh, it involves um, modeling stars, uh, which um, leads to the detection of uh, exoplanets. I'm not sure exactly um, if I can explain it correctly, um, but um, basically, um, they need to model, um, or they need to model stars to. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I can. Ex I'm honestly not sure if I can explain it that well. Um, they need to model like the atmospheres of stars to. Um, like help eliminate um, the glow or the um, the glow that they create um, to make exoplanets easier to see. I'm not sure if um, you can understand what I meant by that. Did anybody catch Mercury last night next to the moon? The crescent. That's right. <laughs> Behind I the tree naked again. Eye. Naked eye in Beechwood, Kevin. How come you couldn't see it? The trees are in the way across the street. Uh, I was driving down the back on Western Boulevard, and I could, I kept looking to the side. I didn't want to crash the car, but it was really nice. I was going to go someplace better tonight, seeing that I realized I had to do this. So, oh shucks. <laughs> yeah, I think you can see it for a couple of days. Well, it was higher than I thought it was going to be, you know. But uh, last night it was like diagonal to the crescent moon. So, and I just happened to be out, you know. Yeah, I only caught the, the moon in a notch in the tree and I couldn't see anything around it. So. Uh, well, yeah, I went to my son's house. He's on um, Beach Avenue and I could see it in his backyard even. Okay, pretty cool. Um, are you gonna mention about Island Beach or no? Uh, you yeah, okay. Um, Island Beach State Park, we've gone through the park permit process. And um, we have them in hand right now. So we will get access back into the park again, you know, so we can go in there do our own observations. And uh, we'll have to have, you know, the information in hand with this, but, you know, go buy the information in the package you know, call to Charlie or Deborah a day, a, a day ahead, even, you know, that morning uh, before we come down in the evening, you know, to do our uh, observations from uh, Island Beach State Park. But I wouldn't um, go if you don't receive confirmation. Right. Um, with that being said, I was talking to Vic and Vic was saying it's a good idea because Deborah takes time off sometimes to copy one of the other officers like Jen or uh, Charlie, you know, when we make a request. Right, right, yeah, that's why I got Charlie on there as well. Yeah. Um, it, we do have to follow state COVID rules. Of course, you know, they're starting to rapidly change right now, um, but, you know, masks will be required for the social distancing aspect. We will park like every other parking spot, keeping one in between, up in between the two cars. Wouldn't be hard for us because as astronomers, you know, okay, we're we naturally yeah. social distance anyway. <laughs> you know, so that, that wouldn't be a hard stretch for us. So um, we already know who like the regulars are who go in there. So, you know, we'll be, you know, contacting you. Um, if anybody else needs to get access into the park, you know, reach out to either Ro, John or myself. Um, well, actually, Ro, do you want to handle? Handing? That's what I was just going to try and say. Like, who yeah, was go going to be 
You don't want it all over the place, you know. Right. And, and so, these are not transferable, meaning like you can't get it and give it to your neighbor uh, to go in the park. It has to be used by an Astra member. Right. So um, we, we will be giving the park a list of everybody who has a copy of this, uh, you know, permit access. Right. And it's only only eligible paid members, members who are paid up to date are eligible to get access to the park. Um, you know, people who might need um, help with a telescope that are newer to the hobby, that's kind of a good opportunity. If you let us know you're coming, maybe one of us would forfeit setting up and just help you with that, you know, or do both, we can, you know. But um, when are we starting this, Jim? You said it was it, effective. It, it, it's effective right now. So then if anybody wants a permit, you know, just let us know. There's our access, you know, it's on the uh, website, our email addresses. So. Okay, but it, it is a good idea that everybody, I think everybody should funnel it through, through row right now, you know, um, just to keep it to one person and then, you know, we'll get that list to the park people. I don't remember if we, I think we did put the regulars, but I don't know if we put everybody in the park. I think Deborah used to call us if there was somebody she wasn't sure of. Right. Yeah. It was just, a, it was, it was always the same individuals that were always going. So that was pretty much what the list consisted of. Right. Right. So. Okay. Uh, Jim, before we start, it's Phil. Um, I just got on line here a couple of minutes ago, and I only saw your list of the events at the various parks you're scheduling for September. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, Jake's Branch. Yeah. Is, is, is that a is that a public event? It, it's um, it's a public event where the county parks. If you're coming into a county park event, there's going to be like a six dollar fee for them. Right. They have to register. Right. Yeah. You're going to have to register for it. Um, where at well an astro member can just go phil i would think just just show up um now talking to to patty it, it people are gonna have to pay to go me doing the presentations i'm not gonna have to pay if i got someone there to help they're not gonna have to pay okay uh, it, it's a park thing it's you no know, okay and it, but it doesn't involve setting up telescopes no no, the only the only okay. kind of setups that would occur would be me because I'm doing demonstrations. Right. So um, it, it wouldn't be much different than, you know, what I did at the Bradley Beach Library where I had, uh, you know, several, you know, telescope types and uh, show and tell items for them. Most of those are going to be inside, Phil. Yeah. All right. The talks, but uh, the county parks have not really opened up to outdoor activities as a group yet. Okay, that's my next question, yeah, okay. Right. And, and as of right now, the group numbers are going to be small, you know, according to the building and room size you know, that they're going to provide. Hmm. Uh, I, I did give an option for Jake's branch, you know, for the light pollution one that if it did become too much for them that I was willing to go back there and spend like a Saturday there as a show and tell item in the corner of one of the display areas, you know, just to do very informal discussions of it uh, on uh, the uh, light pollution. Okay. All right. And um, let's see, since you uh, missed that part, Cloverdale will be in September for uh, astronomy with binoculars. And then in November 9th at Caddis Island, beginner astronomy which would probably be the most labor intensive one with as far as like props are concerned. And then on November 16th would be a discussion on uh, Milky Way photography. Okay. Hmm. Now, which one is the binocular event? That's Clo Cloverdale, right? Cloverdale on September 14th. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, not in any of their, their, their documentation yet. In fact, their fall winter documentation hasn't been uh, 
sent out because they just ironed out the schedule uh, earlier in the week. Mm, okay. Mm. Well, I'm anxious for a reopening. Oh, <laughs> I so haven't set up my telescope in, in six months now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got access to Island Beach State Park now. So, right. You know, okay. We, you know, we can all do it again. You know, right. have you ever been to Island Beach, Phil? Oh, yes. I've been there twice. Uh, uh, what, two, two years ago, three years ago? I did make it down there twice. But I haven't been in at least at least two years. Yeah. Well, the rate we're going, it's almost two years for us as well. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Pretty much. I would like to be there for the eclipse event too. Um, uh, the uh, if I go on the website, will it tell me the exact address where to go for that eclipse of viewing? Uh, just look for the sawmill. Well, he's talking about Island Beach. Oh, I'm talking about the June 10 event. Yeah, that'll be by the that'll be by the sawmill. We're in doing Island, that in, in Seaside Park. Seaside Heights, yeah. All right, that, all right, uh, on the boardwalk. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. The, the park at the end of the boardwalk. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. Uh, come on, share screen. Oh, okay. I have to well, go you're back. sharing, just that there's nothing on it. Yeah, I got to go back. There we go. Okay. Lafayette Avenue. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Um, does uh, does anybody have anything for us for uh, for tonight? For uh, for show and tell. Show and tell. I just happened to get something today, and look at that! It's clear skies out. I'll get them. I'll be right there. Because I didn't buy anything this week. I actually got the Celestron Eclipse Viewer binoculars. And I went outside and tried them. And they're pretty cool. Of course, it's white light, um, but they're very, they're 10 by 42s. You can't use them for anything else but the sun. So, you know, but I just thought they'd be, we had looked at, um, Vic and I one night were talking and we looked online for, solar filters for binoculars. And they sell these, pardon my French, crappy ones for $40 that are made out of cardboard and the same film that the little eyeglasses are made from. And I'm like, why would I want cardboard? These were 65 and you know, it's a regular pair of binoculars, you know? So we'll see how they work. I, yeah, I, I just got them myself. They came in last them? week. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but I figured, you know, instead of spending $40 on two little pieces of cardboard, although I had a friend from my board and setter club, um, he actually posted a picture of the sun that he took. And I said to him, how did you get that? And he actually took a pair of the... Uh, the solar glasses, these, and I'll show you what he did. He took them and just cut out this part here and filled it in with, I guess, some kind of plastic or whatever, and made a lens cover for his camera. And he took, he took pictures of the sun. It came out pretty cool. So well, that's all I got. Yeah, I, I'll be using for trying to get some pictures. I got a solar filter for a 500 millimeter uh, mirrored camera lens. So I'm going to give that a shot and see, you know, what kind of pictures I can get out of that uh, for that day. So does uh, anybody else have anything for tonight? No. Okay. 
All right, then I will go into uh, my portion of the presentation for what I got. And um, at the very end, I also got a proposal to, you know, for our, uh, our radio guys. Um, okay, the uh, all sky camera is um, all these cameras are all basically, you know, homegrown type devices, whether it's an individual making it or uh, a, a small company. And, and basically all it is is a camera that's, you know, pointed up and uh, it can be done, you know, left out there all the time for day and night imaging or, you know, uh, a mobile as in like in the left-hand uh, picture here on, uh, on a tripod. So uh, what is an all sky camera? It's a specialized camera used in meteorology and astronomy. Sorry. Um, you know, for capturing uh, photographs of the entire you know, sky. Sometimes they're also referred to as uh, whole sky cameras. And it's possible to assess in real time the night sky quality and to record fast phenomenon, uh, oh, bad wording over there, such as uh, meteors and fireballs uh, or slower objects such as satellites, rockets, and auroras. And uh, the particular company I actually worked with to get mine because I didn't want to build it myself was All Sky Optics. Uh, you know, keeping an eye on the sky at uh, allskyoptics.com. Uh, if you're interested in something like this, to be aware that this company is out of the UK, but I did not have any problems getting my, uh, my particular item in a, in a reasonable uh, amount of time. You had mentioned that you leave it out daytime and nighttime. You have to cover it, right? No, no. Uh, in fact, I'll show you a little bit later on in the slides. You'll see exactly what, you know, what. What did that glass lens get clouded over? Like now with the pollen? I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay. Um, now, the all sky cameras can be as simple or as complex a device um, as possible on the upper left hand uh, from the uh, Sky at uh, Night magazine is just a simple camera with the, um, the uh, fisheye lens on top, on top of a tripod going right to your laptop. Then in the middle from cloudynights.com, this example is referred to as a fly eye view, if I recall correctly, where there are multiple cameras shooting off in various directions. And then in the upper right is the from astrosurf.com is a, a, an all sky camera that's also built into a weather complex. And in a, in a later slide, you'll see why they have something like that. Uh, all sky cameras can be mounted in many ways. You could have it on a building or a pole as displayed from all sky optics. And then mine that's uh, in the middle slide, you could have it on a, a tripod. Currently I have mine with a pistol grip where I can actually move it around a bit, but that pistol grip is not holding too tight. So I may change it. And then from YouTube, from Patriot Astro, they actually made it into an ammo box with the battery and the Raspberry Pi inside the box uh, with the camera and the uh, lens, you know, mounted, uh, mounted on it externally. And you just like carry that around to wherever you're going. And uh, it's a pretty uh, nice little configuration. If I had seen that early, I may have done it this way. Uh, some history on the uh, all sky. Uh, the image to the right is Mueller's uh, whole sky camera from 1905 and was first reported in 1915 issue of a monthly uh, weather review. Uh, I got it from Wikipedia. I couldn't really get much more information on this particular setup. 
Uh, and then the images to the left are uh, from the, uh, the Bowdoin Observatory in Naval Hill Planetarium in South Africa. And uh, these two individuals, uh, they came from the University of Wisconsin, arrived there in 1953, and they came to the observatory to set up a special wide angle camera that could take photographs of the entire sky in one picture. The camera itself is located at the apex uh, at the top of the tripod and it's looking down at a mirror, you know, at the bottom. So everything is coming into the mirror and, you know, reflecting back up uh, into the camera. And it gave them a, a 150 degrees of, uh, of view. Uh, one of their photographs taken in infrared red light showed the structure and scent of the Milky Way in a way never seen before. And uh, their photograph, according to the article, the, it has been uh, widely uh, reproduced. Other uses for the uh, all sky or whole sky camera is a uh, hemispherical lens that was originally designed by Robin Hill in 1924. Uh, to view the entire sky for meteorological studies of cloud formations. Uh, it was also, the hemispherical photography was also known as canopy photography. Uh, it was a technique to estimate solar radiation and characterize plant canopy geometry using photographs taken looking upward through the extreme wide angle lens or fisheye lens. Um, the uh, hemispherical photo uh, photograph uh, with the sun path in the uh, lower right corner was an overlay for the closed canopy research out in the uh, San Francisco or uh, Peninsula, California area used to study uh, the uh, steelhead head trout habitat. Whole sky cameras can be used to derive cloud-based height and cloud-based uh, motion and was first used this way in 1896. So, you know, the old sky, the whole sky camera actually has a pretty long history. I was kind of like surprised uh, when I saw that. Uh, NASA's media cameras can get a little weird on Halloween. They post these pictures out on the uh, NASA uh, blog site and you can see uh, some of the uh, creepy crawlies on top of the camera, you know, spiders, whatever the bug is on the lower left, and even a bird sitting on top of the camera. Now what's inside the, uh, the portable uh, unit? Uh, I have a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, they're fairly new from what I understand. They've always used Raspberry Pi 3s, you know, in its iteration uh, within the last couple of years. It's basically a mini computer. So if, if you have like a desktop uh, computer, this is the miniaturized version of it. It's got a couple of USB ports, an Ethernet port. Um, this model also has Wi-Fi capability. You can plug your monitor into it, you know, hard drives. It's a pretty uh, versatile unit. And that's what I have right now in my all sky camera. So um, we'll go into the diagram of the setup. Uh, it is powered, my, at least my unit is from a 12 volt uh, car adapter. Same thing we use with our regular astronomy gear. And uh, we can use our batteries that we use with the telescope to, uh, to power it up. It goes to a 12 to a five volt uh, converter to get to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, my unit also has a, uh, a dew heater that's uh, sitting just around the, uh, the lens inside the dome. So dew actually becomes less of an issue. So at that point, the only thing you got to worry about is keeping the lens cover clean and scratch free because the camera will pick it up. And um, I can have two different kind of connections to my all sky camera. I could go from the camera to a USB port on the Raspberry Pi. 
And from there, I can do a Wi-Fi connector uh, to my computer or my laptop. And with the program that I would be using in there, I can actually, you know, see everything that's going on and record, you know, what the camera is picking up through the Raspberry Pi. I also have the option from that same connector, I can eliminate all this and just have the camera going directly to uh, the computer, but it also means that it has to be wired up, you know, to the computer for the camera to talk to it at that point. Uh, that would be a very simplified configuration, but I wanted to have the extra bells and whistles and be able to go wireless uh, where I can. So it gave me two options of either going camera direct to the computer or through the Raspberry Pi uh, across the Wi-Fi uh, connector. I'm still playing with this arrangement, learning it right now. Um, so uh, I'll show more of this later on as I actually start developing my... Uh, my own images uh, on this. The program that I will be using in the computer right now is uh, SharpCap. Uh, it's an easy to use astronomy uh, camera capture tool. I'm pretty sure Sam and Ron are very familiar with this. Um, and, uh, you know, it's dedicated for astronomy cameras, webcams, USB frame grabbers. Uh, a frame grabber is a portable USB device or a stationary PCI card, which can capture videos from nearly any uh, source. Uh, it's designed, the sharp cap is primarily designed for astrophotography and video astronomy. A wide range of features make sharp cap suitable for many types of astro imaging, including planetary, lunar, solar, deep sky, and electronically assisted astronomy. And SharpCap version 3.1 is free to download. So that made it very appealing to, uh, to get that version. If you do get SharpCap uh, Pro, that will cost you uh, a couple of dollars every year uh, for uh, licensing of the, uh, the Pro version. Now, next couple of slides are gonna be some captures from an all sky camera. Uh, this particular one was uh, from uh, uh, the uh, New Mexico area, and uh, there, there is a bit of uh, some uh, um, waning moon in there, but uh, this is, this is a one-minute uh, video. So it was pretty nice. They, uh, you can see the cloud formations going by, the Milky Way setting in. And I did, you know, through the video, I don't know if everybody else was able to see it, but you could see satellites and meteors going through this. Uh, planes do have a distinct trail in these cameras. So they'd be pretty uh, easy to recognize uh, when it does happen. Fortunately, in this video, that didn't occur. So, not knowing, you know, the amount of time they spent on it, but it looked like they did do a pretty good part of the night right up until uh, sunrise. Next video is a, it was posted by uh, Skylapser. Uh, and uh, this was in December 20th of uh, 2020. And this was for uh, a media shower.
That was yeah. cool. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. So that was pretty cool. Right? Yeah, I like that. Um, now, this is a meteor as well as lightning, which is something also piqued my interest because I also like to do storm photography as well. Uh, Gloria's not too thrilled with it, but she does uh, participate with me in it. Uh, so here's an opportunity to uh, do the all sky camera with also with uh, lightning. And this does give some of the answers about, you know, can you do this with bad weather? And, you know, the answer is definitely yes. Now, granted, you know, if it's actually raining when you're trying to do like the lightning photos, it may not be as, you know, dramatic as some of the other pictures I've taken. But, you know, still it is uh, an, an interest of mine. So I'm, you know, thinking of giving it a shot. And here's another one, another lightning storm um, from Big Island out in uh, Hawaii back in 2013. Um, there was no rain in this video, and I thought it was pretty cool because you actually got to see the night sky with the oncoming storm coming in. Now you also notice in this picture too that there's an observatory um, in here as well. And from what I could tell, a lot of the bigger observatories, you're probably gonna see an all sky camera uh, with them as well. In fact, NASA's got like quite a bit of all sky cameras uh, from what I could tell when I was doing my research this week on them. Why is this not moving? There we go. Okay, radio astronomy. Uh, I would also like to mention that uh, Kevin Lloyd, who did our prior uh, presentation uh, on uh, June 10th, is going to do a, that that same presentation for the uh, Mid Hudson uh, Astronomy Association. Uh, I, uh, I had uh, hooked them up uh, with Kevin, so he'll be doing that same presentation again. So radio astronomy and all sky camera proposal. Uh, when we have, you know, the potential for a good meteor shower, you know, maybe we can record any detectable uh, meteor transits, you know, via the radio. And I could have the all sky camera running at the same time and then take the data from both uh, and try syncing them up, you know, the two for a video, you know, this way we can have, you know, both of them coinciding with each other. Now, this is something that can be done and it's actually being done today. Um, the uh, APOD, which is astronomy picture of the day, had done this recording on uh, June 15th of 2021 at the Radio Fireball Observatory in uh, New Mexico.
So for our radio guys, if they have the capability or have it already of a, uh, a scatter meteor detector, um, you know, maybe we can do something like this, you know, just as a uh, simple uh, club, um, you know, attempt at uh, putting something like this together. What frequency? Oh, I'd have to go back in the prior presentations and actually research it to see, you know, what, what it would be. Um, but if there is an interest in it, you know, we could put something together and then, you know, maybe go to Island Beach State Park for a good meteor shower and just let it sit there, you know, and uh, record itself while we sit back and, you know, chat, look up in the sky and say, I just missed that, you know. <laughs> so. And um, that's all I have right now as far as the, the presentation goes. So anybody got any questions on it? What kind of memory were you talking about? If you're going to be out there all night, you're going to need a nice little. Uh... I'm going to probably bring like a terabyte drive just to attach it to uh, the laptop to, uh, to let it run along with a good uh, battery uh, set up for the laptop to keep going. Okay. Um, in fact, I just posted on the club uh, Facebook a YouTube video just on a, such a homemade uh, battery setup. <laughs> you know, so it's something I, I'm considering if I want to have like a really hefty battery configuration to do something like this. Yeah. So you you got radio interest run? I've been to Ham for 30 something years. <laughs> okay, so if I, if I find anything, I'll pass it by and see what you think. All right. I know Carlton also does radio. Hey, Carlton. Any, any interest in doing something like this? Uh, yeah, I could be interested, Jim. Okay. All right, so if I got any, any material, I'll, I'll pass it by you guys to see if, uh, if you're you know, what, what we can and, you know, can't do. If we can make like a portable unit or even if I have to go to somebody's uh, house and they got like a dark sky area and we can just like, you know, record, you know, see what we can come up with. I think Island Beach State Park would probably be the better choice, you know, because then we could have uh, some more club participation, you know, for that night. But it, um, I had a question. All the parts you were showing, yes. like that Raspberry Pi, is that all part of it, what you purchase? It's you everything. It, yeah, it's everything that I had uh, purchased uh, when I got it. I specifically asked them where I had the versatility of, uh, you know, being mobile and being able to record. I could actually stick a memory card on here. Um, if you were to to break apart one of our ASI Air Pros that Sam and Ron have and myself, it's a Raspberry Pi in there. Oh, the guts are all the same. It's just the software is a little bit different. Um, but, you know, I have it where I can just like maybe go on my cell phone or tablet and run the Raspberry Pi and record right into it for the memory that's on here now or I can have it externally saved to another device like a laptop or a, uh, you know, like a big flash drive. And again, this is all still new to me. So I'm still learning like, you know, all the intricacies about it, but I've already had it out, out in the yard and did my initial rec recording, figured out some of the mistakes I did. I had to go back in there and adjust the lens for getting a better focus and maybe later tonight you know i may go back out and see how well i did i got the image pretty sharp inside i want to make sure i have the sharp image outside now uh which camera does that use it's it's using the asi uh 170 178 yeah it should be up on the screen right now i think yeah, the yeah, it's a plan. It's listed as a planetary camera. Yeah. And I, I got lucky. The guy had like one left, you know, because just like anything else, astronomy wise, everything is hard to get right now. 
Big question. How much does this setup cost? Um, this, the biggest expense was the camera. So I, I, I spent around $400 for him to put the whole thing together for me and, and the shipping. So it's only $400 for everything? Um, I'd have to go back and get an exact count. It was probably more than that, but I, I can't remember exact, the exact price. Well, Gloria is there. You don't want to say, right? Oh, no, she's in the other. She was there. She I'm agreed to all this. You. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. But yeah, she, I, I don't make a move without her you know, saying yes. So. No, because I had looked at them after you said you were getting one, and I saw some of them like eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars. Oh yeah, well that's why. Yeah, you're talking like the ones from like OPT and some other yeah, places. Yeah. yeah, that's why I went with All Sky Optics because price wise, he was the best price around. You know, for doing something like this. And again, if you have a laptop. All you need really to do is just to get like a, a camera and screw it onto the top of the tripod and you should be able to work with just the, uh, the laptop. Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to get this in my head. Like so here. when you buy this unit, it comes without a camera. It comes with the camera. Oh, it comes with the camera. Yes. Yeah. So like that one there in the middle that you just showed with like multiple cameras. How do they do that? That is more of a university scientific type setup. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, they would have the funding for it. NASA would have the funding for it. Uh, a regular person like us, unless you got money to burn, you're not going to do that. Yeah, but everything, everything you see here is exact, exactly how it came. You know, every no, it looks bigger than that in the pictures. Well, yeah, it's really, it's really not that big of a unit. Okay. Yeah. You know, and I went down to the photo center. I got an old tripod right now. I got it set up small, but this thing stands taller than I am, you know, which is what you want. You know, this way you get ahead of, you know, the, the image uh, of not having people uh, shown in it. You ought to ask him a trivia question. What's that? How did Raspberry Pi get its name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Making the other me hungry. Fruit was taken. What was that? But the other fruit was taken. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that came from the guy who was one of the developers of Raspberry Pi. Must have been like a dad joke expert, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any, anyone else? Any uh, questions on this? Or the uh, you know potential proposal? You know, when you bought it, you had said that you were going to use it for public outreach. How would you use that for public outreach? Well, I would have this set up. Um, we'll say like next to the car. Okay. It's just shooting up. And if it piques anybody's interest on what's going on, then, then I would explain it to them and show them. So what, they would be watching the image on your laptop? They could see the imaging going on in the laptop, yeah. You know, just another, just another tool to see, you know, if, if, you know, getting people to get that interest on what's going on, you know, with astronomy. You know, because we, you know, as a, as a club, as an astronomy club, you know, we want to see more people like Sam and Lucy, you know, coming into the club and getting interest in what's going on. Question, Jim. Yes, sir. You picked up that uh, unit that uh, connects from the eyepiece to a seven inch uh, screen. Have you played with it? No, not yet. Um, I had to wait until my son's cat, Sylvie, was out of the house. She's a, a door dasher. Oh, okay. And I didn't trust the scenario that if I went to go outside to do this and came back in and she didn't get out of the room, that she may have been like locked up in because she has been experimenting with doorknobs. 
So, you, you know, erring on the short side of caution, I said I was going to wait. Um, but yes, that is another personal project that I do intend to do. Um, it, it's near and dear to me, like I've mentioned before, you know, that my daughter can't really look in telescopes comfortably. So I want to make sure I get that, that imager thing working, you know, so she can actually see what's going on. So yeah, I will be working with that. Anyone else? Okay, that's all I got for today. Um, Ro? Only thing I said was the supernova and Cassiopeia. And the other thing I would bring up, they said Mercury now has a tail. What? So um, you know, I didn't have my scope out, of course, uh, to see it, but that's what they're saying. I've seen photographs of it, you know, so that's interesting and don't wow. know what it's really happening. Rich, uh, Phil, has anything like that happened before with Mercury? Sorry, you asking me, Jim? Yeah. Uh, to Mercury? Yeah, about having a tail going by in an image. No, this is the first I've heard of that. <laughs> wow. Never heard that before. Yeah, no, they've been reporting it and showing pictures of it online. I don't know. Let me see. Oh. Is this tail uh, as, as wide as the planet? Ro, you're on mute. Apparently the tail was predicted in the 1980s and discovered in 2001. Okay, so it's, it's a really fairly recent phenomenon then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I hear someone. Yeah, I, I have a. I, I see a picture of it. Uh, I've never seen anything like that, but apparently they're calling it a sodium tail. Oh, that's pretty salty. That's pretty salty. <laughs> Okay. Did they say how long something like that is going to go on for, or is it just like a, a one-time deal? Here's a picture I just found online. Wow. Yeah, almost, that's the one I'm looking almost, at. Almost looks like a comet. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. I don't hmm. think it's doing it any justice, but that's something else. Although that was it in motion. Yeah, see it? The tail yeah. on? Yeah, That's I see cool. it. If there's any other pictures it has. Yeah, it. apparently uh, Mercury's thin atmosphere contains a small amount of sodium and it glows when excited by light from the sun. And the sunlight also uh, liberates these molecules from the surface and pushes them away. So that's coming, yeah, that's coming from Mercury. Wow. It's not surprising, but I had never heard of it. First time for everything. Yeah, well, first time for me is uh, Lauren Ball, who is pretty big into tracking like asteroids. And he's got quite a number of, his, of uh, discoveries under his belt. Uh, one of his postings, he was talking about Trojan asteroids and i've never heard of that before myself so i'm going to be looking to do a little bit more research into that subject and maybe do a a future uh, presentation on it so i thought it was kind of interesting you know when i the things i was reading up on it hmm. so what exactly is that is that like one of the ones that come from another, from outside in, or? It's actually, it's asteroids that are 
and and Rich and Phil can correct me if I'm wrong on this. They're they're either on the leading or the tail orbit of a planet. So you'll have a group of asteroids in the same orbit before the planet and then after the planet. Yeah, that's just, that's essentially correct. There's uh, uh, in, in two bodies, like if you have the Earth and the Sun, there's uh, five stable or semi-stable points called Lagrange points. Lagrange, yeah. And uh, there's... There's two that are stable, 60 degrees ahead of Earth in the orbit and 60 degrees behind the Earth in the orbit. And uh, you can get asteroids parking in there. And I think, I think there's one in, in one of the Lagrange points now that they've discovered. Uh, the other two Lagrange points, Lagrange, Lagrange 1 and 2, uh, Lagrange 2 is... Uh, away from away from the sun, about a million miles away from the sun, from from the Earth, and they've got spacecraft there, like the uh, Planck spacecraft and uh, uh, some other ones that that sit out there and just collect data. And is then there's the, the, is, is that where the James Webb is going? The James Webb is going at the Lagrange two point. Yeah, yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. And there are several uh, satellites at the Lagrange one point, which is sunside a million miles. And those are the ones that are monitoring the, the sun for any uh, solar activity. Cool. I'll tell you one thing we were talking about. This was, uh, I was a friend of mine the other night. It's been so long since we've been out. I, I think if I got out under the skies with my scope, I'd be like a newbie. I'd have to reacclimate mm. myself. You know how you used to know when the seasons change and everything. Now it's like, because we haven't been out in so long. Mm, that's right. Yeah. You know, you'd be rusty. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like it used to be where you just, Oh, look, there's this and there's that. And I try to go out just naked eye and say, okay, there's the Big Dipper and there's Cassiopeia, you know. But still, it's like I, I'll, I'll second think myself. I'll be like, now what is that one? You know? <laughs> I have to look it up. Even last night, somebody had posted online that it was a crescent moon with Venus. So when I went out last night, I'm like, that can't be Venus. It's not bright enough. And that's, and I mean, you could see it naked eye, but it was Mercury because I actually, when I got to my son's house, I used the uh, app on my phone and it was definitely Mercury. So, I mean, people who don't know, you know, they thought that was Venus, you know, but it wasn't uh, to me, it, you know, a trained eye, you know, Venus is very bright. So I did see Jupiter and Saturn one morning and they're going to give us a yeah. nice show again. I got up this morning and saw Jupiter and Saturn did very nicely. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a nice year for it again. Uh, last year was kind of wasted because we couldn't get out and show everybody all the planets, you know. Hmm. But, all right. Well, it's uh, um, to look like things are opening up for us so we can get, get reacquainted. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I have a, an item. Um, I'm sure anybody's aware. Uh, there's news from Novans. Anybody know about it? No. Are they opening up? Uh, I've got a, an email from Cara dated uh, uh, April 30. It's a rather lengthy. Uh, can I, I'll read it. I'll read it one or two paragraphs, okay? Uh, it says, hello, everyone. We're working hard to get everything ready for a reopening at Novans at 35% capacity. Tentatively, we are going to try to offer our first shows the weekend of June 4 and 5, believe it or not. <laughs> we will offer a reduced Saturday schedule and possibly a laser show on Friday nights. And we're really limited to the cleaning schedule and the staff availability. We're going to have to have everyone in for training before they can work as we have some new protocols and restrictions that we are working with. So anyway, uh, that's the, the, the gist of the message that she sent on the 30th of April. Uh, and apparently it is going to, June 4 and 5, there's going to be uh, at, least, at least one show. 
<laughs> cool. And and gradually uh, spreading out from there throughout the summer. Are you going back to work there, Phil? Well, I've indicated availability. Um, yes, I, I, I believe I would be. Uh, I haven't heard anything positive about that. I do know that apparently, Kara has mentioned that for those who are coming back on staff, it, there's gonna be some, some uh, uh, orientation and, uh, and retraining, new, uh, new, new protocols, I don't know what she's referring to, but there's going to be a, a, new, a new way of doing things. So we have to have to wait and see. It's probably COVID-centric uh, protocol. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would guess so, yeah. 35%, I guess, means you can get about 30 or 35 people in there, and that's about it. It's what, 100 seating capacity? Yeah, just under 100, yeah, 90, yes. 99, I think, yeah. All right, so it's, that's probably what it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's that's that that's good to know. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you more when I learn more. All right, cool. Lucy, I see your hand's been raised a couple of times. Uh, yeah, how Ms. Rowe was talking about um, uh, Mercury with the tail, right? It was Mercury? Yes. Um, can, do you have to have like a telescope or binoculars to see that or can you just no, see it, it like with a naked eye? eye? I saw it naked okay. eye last night. Uh, you probably could see it tonight once it gets darker. It shouldn't be too far away from the moon. Last night, it just happened to be like, you know, diagonal, just level with the moon. But tonight, maybe it might be the moon might be a little lower. No, higher. 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 But you'd still be able to see it. It's right off to the right of the crescent moon. Yeah, I can see the moon now. Well, I'm in the back of the house. It's I can't. A bit see. higher than last night. So, so I just think give it's it a shot. Like That's the only way you're going to find out. Use your sky. Do you have a thing on your tablet that, like the uh, Google Sky Map, something like that, that yeah. you would be able I'm to going to download that today, actually. Yeah, and that would help you um, see where it is if you're not sure if that's Mercury or not. Oh, there's Lucy go. Did we lose Lucy? Oh, um, there she is. My, my uh, camera's going to go off because I'm downloading that app now. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. But I mean, you should be able to see it again. I'm trying to brighten myself up. There we go. Okay. But uh, oh. as far as the tail, you're not going to see the tail. So, uh, uh, Lucy, maybe uh, see if your mom can reach out to me tomorrow. Okay. All right, cool. Be better. Um, confirmation. My mom asked if Monday would be better. Sure, that'll be fine. I saw on Facebook um, Sarah's niece, who used to be a member of Astra, uh, was with Kamala Harris, um, I guess in Washington or wherever. Uh, they were the first class of girl Eagle Scouts. And she was congratulating them. So it was pretty nice. Kevin's looking up. Yeah, I'm looking to see if I can spot any. It's still too light. Yeah, it's too bright. Not dark enough yet. Well, if you know generally where it is, that's the game I always play with the kids when it gets like this time yeah. of the night, yeah, you know, I always tell them, just scan your eyes back and forth and you'll catch a little glimmer. Yep. And then you'll see it and you'll see the planet. <clears throat> what are we looking at with Phil there? <laughs> <laughs> it's up close oh, his hand. His hand. <laughs> yep. He's basically saying, tell it to the hand right now. <laughs> Oh, uh, gee. What <laughs> we were seeing was a hand, Phil. I'm having camera troubles. I don't know. <laughs> I was seeing you. All yeah, right. That's good. Yeah. Well, look, Kevin's doing a mobile yeah, zoom. Yeah, I see. He's going to try and find the moon. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the back of the house, so that's east. And oh, I'd have to pick that up. 
think I might go outside. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Sam. See if you see it. It's too bright yet. Yeah, it's too I'm bright. gonna go try to um, go outside tonight. Right, everyone's so, gonna go outside yeah. with their cell phone. I usually see. Cell phone. Last couple of days, I usually see Procyon pop first. I don't see it well, yet. Sirius too. Is Sirius still up? I don't even no, know. No, it's down below the, the tree line for me. I'm in a in a depression here, so everything is up from here. So. Got to got to cut those trees down so you can get some more sky there. Right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm better. He'll have to. He'll have to get I'm a better in some mortgage. directions. He'll have to get a second mortgage on his house. I don't do too bad to the east, but and then to the north, I always have Tom's River. The lights from Tom's River in my way. It just blots out everything. Right. So, uh, Phil, what do you think? Um, if they're opening the planetarium again, you think at some point the club's going to get back in there? I, I would think so, yes. Uh, we they haven't talked about that yet, but I uh, um, have to wait and see. Uh, I'm, I'm awaiting further emails from Kara as for more details uh, of what the steps are going to be for reopening. I would think somewhere down the line, uh, right. Astra, Astra would become contacted. Um, you know, we, I certainly hope there'll be a reconnection there. I'm counting on it, matter of fact, definitely, yeah. Cool. Well, are they in, in session there or are they still virtual, the students? The stu uh, gee, I don't know, maybe, maybe Rich. Rich knows. Rich, are the, they're the, still virtual. They're still virtual? Oh, Rich is yeah, most most of most of it is virtual. Uh, there, I think, are some labs. Uh, the nursing program is face to face. That has to be. It has to be down there. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, some some of the some of the labs, like the uh, the bio and chemistry labs, are all uh, face to face there. Now, uh, do you but know? I, I, if they're going to make the kids, like I heard some of the colleges for the kids to go back on campus in September, they have to be vaccinated or they won't let them go. Back. I haven't heard. Right. I haven't heard yet. If that's the case, I, I suspect it might be, mm -hmm. but the, the guidance uh, right now is, is uh, very sparse. Uh, I think they're waiting for the state to come up with uh, their their plan where they want to go with with everything. But I would suspect they probably would want them to get the vaccine. Uh, they haven't asked us, uh, but I'm I mean I I'm vaccinated, so I have the card, so I can prove to the college that I'm vaccinated. It's not a big deal. Yeah, that's why. Don't get uh, rid of that card. That card's like the new driver's license. Because oh, apparently yeah. a lot of places now are going to ask you to show the card. Keep, keep a picture on your phone. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, I have that too. That's actually a good idea but, to put a picture on the phone. This way you don't lose not the card. card around. Of course, they have, uh, they're coming out with counterfeit cards and people are paying yeah, uh, uh, yeah. all kinds of money. And it's ridiculous. I heard that, but then who are they hurting but themselves? I mean, if they're going to go around without a mask and everything, like I was saying to somebody yesterday, I said, if so many people are vaccinated, the germs are going to have to find somebody to hook on to. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to look for the people that haven't been vaccinated, you know? Yeah, look how bright it is by Sam. There's no way you're going to see it yet. And you too, Kevin. I'm bright here. You mentioned the colleges. My my grandson uh, goes to Rowan, and uh, they're more or less requiring him. I don't. I think they're encouraging him to get the, the vaccine. If they do, I heard they, some of them going to make five hundred dollar credits. Like one on their housing and one on something else, a tuition or something. So. Yeah, Rutgers. I think I heard required. Rutgers. I think was one that had to. Sam, do you have to have the vaccination to go back? I think so. Yeah. I yeah. Say. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting my second dose tomorrow. Oh, are you? That's good. Which one did you get? Uh, Pfizer. Okay. 
So, so what, what powers are you hoping you get when you get the second uh, vaccine? I got, uh, <laughs> I had a reaction. I, I, uh, maybe, I was... maybe invisibility so I don't have to deal with people. Okay. <laughs> I, I tried the spider power ones when I jumped on the wall at the side of the house, I fell so I know it didn't work. <laughs> How about the x-ray vision? I thought you would want that, Jim. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. My, my eyes are bad the, enough right now. As in the back of, back of comic books, they would sell all that garbage. And they had yeah. the glasses. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> that. That ad was right next to the, uh, the ad for the, uh, you know, do you want muscles with the yeah. picture of the guy kicking sand in the other guy? <laughs> Say, Ron was laughing. He remembers that stuff. I, remember that. I, mean, I need, I need to order that right now. You know? <laughs> I always remember that. I always wanted the x-ray vision glasses. <laughs> and then I was nervous that somebody had them because then they'd be able to see what's under your clothes. <laughs> uh, a lot of funny ads back then. Or oh, the sea monkeys. The sea monkeys I've had. We had them with, with my kids. We grew them. But they didn't look like the sea monkey ad. <laughs> no, they only look like they the stuff I used to feed them on fish. Their head. <laughs> they look like the stuff I used to scoop with a net and feed to my fish. Yeah, but remember the picture of the sea monkeys? They all had like a big belly. and they Yeah, had that, and they're like waving. <laughs> the horns on their head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's what you thought you were going to get, you know? Yep. <laughs> that's funny. Don't you think that's funny? <laughs> All right. So I guess John's not going to make it. No, no, I guess not. But um, all right. Well, uh, anybody has anything interesting for next month, let us know. And um, you know, we'll put it on the schedule. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully have some more maybe on the uh, all sky, you know, how much further I get with it, and maybe with the uh, the, the revolution imager as well. Um, thanks for Carlton to for bringing that up again. I do need to get that rolling, especially if there's a prospect to star party starting again. So I want to have that available for the people who do have uh, vision impairments. <clears throat> Might not be bad to do a review of the summer sky and refresh everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. In, in fact, I'm trying to incorporate that into the astronomy with binoculars. Mm -hmm. uh, having, depending on the season, when the presentation would go, like in the future, of having, you know, like the spring, summer, fall, and winter, you know, objects, you know, for the binoculars. Uh, mm -hmm. built into the presentation and just, you know, go to the appropriate one, you know, for that time frame. I can't believe how bright it still is out. Yeah. Now the astronomers have to wait later. Yeah. We like when it's four o'clock, then you can go right out with your telescope. <laughs> yeah, you're also cold. Yeah, it'd be cold, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yep. Sam, Sam knows about being outside in the cold like that. Oh, yeah, we, we got that down pat, right, Jim? We send Sam out and we sit on the computer and watch him. <laughs> right, right. We've been doing those virtual ones. I had Sam, all we see is his face like this in the hood. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm having sympathy pains, feeling my hands not being able to touch the metal poles and everything. <laughs> Yeah, we should try for maybe one more virtual. What do you think, Sam? Uh, well, I mean, it's not that cold out, so I'm, I'm game. Well, like uh, Sam said, it doesn't look. It's not even dark enough yet. Right. We'd have well, to have a meeting at like a 10, 10 o'clock. Well, if it's for a virtual star party, it could be separate maybe from the meeting now at this point. You know? Or do it and then record it and then show it. Right. Yeah, yeah that too. That's uh, just the way it is. 
I don't know what June's moon is. We had strawberry moon. Now what's this one going to be? <sighs> worm moon. I think we had the worm moon. Yeah, strawberry. I can't have strawberries. I'm still on keto right now. Why can't you have that? That's uh, fruits. Sh sugar. Sugar is a carb. Um, so I only got like two more weeks on it. Um, I've dropped 40, you know, since I started. Yeah, and then you get back into astronomy and go out to the diner with us. Oh, the, well, no, I made I made that work. I've been to the Crystal Diner and I have my Brooklyn burger, but without the bun. There you go. And it works. Yeah. Including the French fries that Ron's eating right now. Is that what Ron's having? <laughs> He's waving it at me. <laughs> oh, oh, harvest. Uh, <laughs> they're not French fries. Close enough. It's still a cob. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if no one's else got anything to, to brought up, bring up, you know, that's all I got for tonight. So I, I guess at this point we can uh, call it a, uh, a good night for everybody. All right. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All yeah. right. Good meeting. Everyone. Oh, good, uh, good evening. What? Don't forget, if you want the form for Island Beach, let me know. I do, bro. All right. Well, I okay. emailed you a uh, request for it. Okay, Jim, are we going to just send them what she sent us for temporary use? Yes, we'll send them that as well as the um, the directions I had uh, sent to them. I'll resend it to you, Rose. So you all have right, yes, yeah, send me the package. Um, that's another thing. the The permit has the wrong locations on there. We go to fifteen and nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, follow yeah. follow the directions on the uh, the rest of the form, not the per the the permit itself. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know: Are you guys having a June meeting, like virtually? June, probably. Why? Yeah. Okay, because I know you were doing this thing with Cloverdale. You're gonna do a presentation, Lucy? Uh, I don't. Probably not. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll figure something out and get it going. Okay. All right, guys. Have All a right, good night. everybody. Have okay, a good, good night. night everyone. Have a good one, guys.